Uh, hope and Ben uh, come and um, in, in, in inspire the audience. Thank you. So, um, yes, the short form is we, we do do communications, but the truth is we do whatever it does to make this world a better place. We draw people in from communications, marketing, all these sorts of things, and go, let's do something good that makes things better. So, I was asked tonight to talk to you about, uh, give you a little pep up, if you like, about the fact that it can seem pretty bad. So, let me start with a little song. No, no, so I like the song. And I thought I'd take you through some little facts that I found. Did you know that just this week the EU banned animal testing? I'm completely close. This is actually an amazing photo of some monkeys that are going to test. Uh, they have seen uh, the outside world for the very first time. This is three days old, this is Gone. Animal testing in the EU. Dunkin' Donuts just this week announced they'll adopt the palm oil policy to stop removing the forest. Gucci on the same day launched a zero deforestation handbag. LA last year banned plastic bags. They joined Seattle, San Francisco, Portland, Edmonds, uh, Bellingham, Washington, all over the USA. Uh, LA, yeah. you guys might have been first. A um, little bit of a stat from earlier this week. This year, new wind power is cheaper than coal and gas in Australia now. That's for new development, so that's good. Investors are going to love that. And I found this little one floating around the internet. The energy consumption of a fridge is now about a tenth of what it was in. 72. So Renewable energy investment. Anyone who's been watching the media knows now how strips fossil fuels. And for the first time, look at that growth from 2004 to 2011. This is good. Yeah? Nuclear weapons. Nobody hears about them anymore because they're an all time low. Look at the drop down in how many weapons there are in the world. And, that, and when it comes to health and tuberculosis, oh, gone all the way down. The starry clock has been rediscovered after being got extinct for 160 years, probably why we've never ever heard of it. Um, <laughs> we've, we've halved extreme poverty in the last 20 years. Immunisation coverage has just gone up to over 75 percent. Childhood deaths are down. Things are actually getting better in the world, but you never hear about this stuff. All we hear is bad things. So I thought that was quite nice. Unfortunately, the news has to stop when we get to this climate change conversation. Um, and we go, kind of, that awesome, the world's getting better, except something's wrong, and it's basically that. 97% uh, of scientists, we have a scientific consensus, but we have a public consensus that's pretty much the other way. That's from the UK, that one. Uh, it's no better in America, only a third of them believe in man made climate change. Um, Two thirds believe in climate change, but only a third of them believe in man made climate change. I thought this was really interesting. 19% of Americans think it's not real and they cite personal weather observations as their proof. Oh, we're not climate change. 11% of them um, cited religious reasons. God told me. Um, on the good side, that's actually up from where it used to be. Um, in Australia, stats, this is last year's stats, um, what best described for 50% think it's, it's man-made, but I always love putting that next to the other stat. Only 50% think it's man-made, but 53% think the government should do more about it. It's, it's, it's not man-made, but that government's not going to be um, I guess when you start to look at this, you go, how come the rest of the world can be getting better and we believe in these problems, yet we don't when it comes to climate change? And what have they done right on all these other issues that we kind of must be doing wrong? This not to be working out, and, and I went, well, when these things happen, you go, know, we need extreme tactics. Where people start to go, we need something that's really going to cut through to people, and of course, that's when everyone goes, we need fear. Yeah. <laughs> At which point, we say, hmm, same fear. Problem with fear is it's a really basic human function. Fear. When you fear something, you do one of two things: you fight or you flee. Which is exactly what's happened in the climate change debate. People have either gone, you're wrong, and I'm going to get up there and I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Or they've gone, I can't handle this. I'm just going to go back to my day-to-day -day life and I'm going to kind of ignore it. So we kind of look at this and go, well, fear's not going to work. So what's the opposite of fear? And I found this amazing stat on the internet that I thought would go about that throughout the ages, there's always been a hundred percent of men. <laughs> Everybody wants fun in this world, yeah. So I kind of thought I'd 
have a look with you guys about communications that flips this around and takes this dastardly subject of climate change and goes, how can we be a little bit smart about this and how can we make it just a little bit more fun to do the right thing instead of always being about less and, you know, change your light bulb and use less of this. How can you go, well, guess what? It's actually not about less. Yeah, you might find a bit less stuff and you can have a whole lot more fun by doing it this way and shifting the world to a different place. So I thought I'd take you through um, three examples of people who have done this. Um, one of them being us, anyway. This is a fantastic example. These guys uh, in the um, USA, and they basically started sort of very, um, Dallas, Texas, the heart of conservatism in the USA. And they basically said, you know what? If we want to change our streets and we don't want to look like this, we can ask the government for permission or we can get smart and we can go to our mates who have a whole bunch of plants and a whole bunch of things and we can just start making a street better ourselves. So they go out there, they're called better block. And what they do is they go and borrow plants and they go and get local community organisations and they get everybody put together until they end up with a street that looks something like that. <coughs> they just do it all without asking. And they tell all their friends to come on down, they get all the local businesses involved and they get them to come out, put, do alfresco dining for the day on the street and they go, I tell you what, we're not going to ask permission. We're going to show you what the work looks like. And they just go and just play that door. Now, one of the guys admittedly is a town planner for the, for the, for the, for the local town. And, and they're, they're very smart about it. They start like this. They go out there and they do a really nice map of things. And then they, um, they're, they're good in it. They're regular bits. Run things in the workplace. And they set this stuff all up. Um, they go and they, they reckon gaffer tape is their number one tool that they use <laughs> in the system. And they go and they draw new bike lanes. They only use spray chalk to do it. And um, that way it can all be washed off again at the end of the day. And they go through and they get all their friends and go, come on, right up and down the street, show me what bike lanes look like. And they literally demonstrate this world. Now, what's fantastic about these guys is when they first started doing this in Dallas, Texas, obviously, people started going, mm -hmm, you can't do that, what are you doing? One local government went, hang on, that's pretty good. We'll give you a million bucks to change that street permanently. And they start to change the streets permanently. So what they do now is they go around the USA and they, they, they set these things up everywhere. Um, so they don't just do it once. They're now this organization that helps you and shows you how you can do it. And people who want to do it, they go, great, we'll give you the tools and we'll give you the know-how. And, and you end up with these beautiful little bits of slice of life where you go, there's a mum who's brought her kid down to play on a park that's just along the grass. And, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. and they kind of, people will actually go out on the street. They're proving this. You can socialize and change the street and change how people deal with streets. They're just making a place to drive down. Um, so you see they've done this all over the place. This is, and the thing is, they don't try and make it look amazing. They just grab what they can. They say that their big philosophy is, um, Pick a budget and take zero off and go, how can we do it for that? That makes you get creative, it makes you go and make your own bits, go find things we're good, throw it away and put it all together. Um, and what's amazing is this thing has taken up as a massive phenomenon. They're now consultants have gone from a couple of guys who were kind of guerrilla doing this on the weekends and now they do get council permission that people ask them to come to their city and make all these better block things. I thought um, they have another project which was actually fantastic where they uh, set up a fake website for a local community. Outcome, a local uh, tram line authority, and it looks like a real government website. You know, government people love this. They set up a fake government website and said, There's a new tram line coming to your part of town. <laughs> Three years later, I'll get 70 million bucks of funding for them. It's funny. It's amazing. Um, and just for anybody who wants to learn from this, one of the things they really say is important, which we find too in our stuff, is um, measure everything because, of course, government would last measure. They get these great measurements, like twice as many people came, but they drive half the speed when they go down the street. They're really simple measurements that show you how people go. Let me show you how that. So this is one of ours. So that's one that I wish we'd done. This is one we actually have done. Um, has anyone heard of the garage sale truck? It's, it's getting around. So the, the basic fun premise behind the garage sale trail is that you have cupboards full of stuff, right? And people buy, people go and pay to store stuff because they, then they go and buy new stuff. They don't know what to do with their own stuff because there's no market. They dump stuff they don't think people want on the street. They go and fill up bins with other stuff. Um, the world kind of cope with all this much stuff. Everyone loves this feeling of getting new stuff. But we kind of went, actually, you know what? The only feeling better than getting new stuff is getting rid of old stuff. So what if we create a little market where you can get new stuff and get rid of old stuff at the same time? So we said, what if we could get everyone in Australia to have a garage stuff on the same day? 
Um, we used a little bit of technology, and we went, that's for my postcode one day, and you put your, your sale on the map, and you show what's for sale, and you give it a fun name and all that, and you tell your friends on Facebook, and you download the phone app, and on the day, you can sit there and walk around, and it directs you to the next garage sale, so it takes you through the trail, and it creates this whole thing where you get to, you can be sure that there's going to be good stuff for sale.